Thank you very much, Simon Mordew, for participating in the Autumn Academy 2017 here in Oxford. It was very interesting to know the position of the EU institutions and the Commission on the phenomenon of migration and what are the views of future developments. Would you please sum up for us what were the key points of your presentation today? I think I will start with probably the key message, which migration really needs to be viewed as an opportunity and not as a threat. Um, in many different ways, I think from historical traditional reasons, Europe has been proud to be able to offer protection to those people who are fleeing war or particular challenges. Um, we've shown in the last couple of years that we're able to welcome and offer protection to large numbers of people. And I think it's important that we're able to continue to defend that space for protection within the European Union. But equally, we also need economic migration. We need legal channels and pathways to welcome people who can contribute to the development of our society. But in both of these cases, I think one of the key challenges we face is how can we perhaps replace the disorderly migratory flows we've seen in the last couple of years with orderly flows using instruments and tools such as resettlement that grant people the possibility to arrive in the European Union for protection without having to pay a smuggler for a dangerous passage or regular pathways as well for economic migrants in ways that we can define the kind of skills and profiles that we in the European Union need and make a match with the skills and competences that are available in some of our closest partner countries. Thank you very much. And um, we've seen um, the Commission very focused on the reform of the common European asylum seeker at uh, asylum system and uh, uh, an increased attention uh, towards asylum but uh, it feels sometimes that there is a lack of focus and attention towards also those who are irregular migrants that do not fall within the asylum system. What is the view of the Commission and what kind of develop developments can we have from EU institutions on irregular migrants? Sorry, I just need to okay. st stop mm -hmm. this for right. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have done that before. Obviously there's been, as you rightly say, an, an incredible political focus and attention on the reform of the common European asylum system, because so I think this has been part, or is an essential element for exiting what has been at times a bit like a, a crisis situation, and provide sustainable solutions in the long term for the equitable and fair management of migration flows. Um, if I look on irregular migration, I think the focus at the European Union level is really doing everything we can to disincentivize irregular migration. It starts with looking at anti-smuggling activities to dismantle the smugglers, um, tackle their, uh, their uh, disinformation campaigns, provide people with a realistic picture of what to expect in the European Union. It also involves us being able to be much more effective in our return policy, where we still struggle, to be frank. So we're looking now to beef up the uh, capacities of the European border and coast guard agencies so that they can effectively carry out return operations in support of our uh, member states. We're also looking to work with our third country partners so that they will agree to accept their citizens back. And then I think one has to look at everything we can to disincentivize people having to make that choice. So again, it's about opening up the legal pathways for migration. But I also think it's important to continue to invest in addressing some of the root causes of migration. By that I mean making sure that the European Union is able to work with its African partners to create economic opportunities for people at home. We have, for example, um, what we call the External Investment Plan, which is a, a plan which looks to use grant funding from the development aid to mix it with funding from the international financing institutions and use that as a way to encourage private sector investment in Africa. Uh, our proposals on the table could lead to something like 44 billion euro of investment in Africa, creating also opportunities at home and disincentivizing people from taking a perilous journey and arriving irregularly in the European Union. Thank you very much.